long list of potential perpetrators. And I am sure that the FSB, Russia's intelligence services, the CIA and intelligence partners globally are working to ascertain who the perpetrators are, not only because of this attack, but because if this was a global terrorist organization and not one that is just focused on Russia, folks are going to want to rule out the possibility that there may be other attacks, whether in Russia itself or more broadly across the globe. And, and as we continue to monitor these images out of Moscow, we see the enormous presence uh, by authorities there. Uh, so here in the United States, uh, as you mentioned, the different kind of groups uh, and agencies are trying to determine who may have been responsible. Uh, and yet there was information that was gathered, you said, um, about this potentially being in the works. That kind of information, Sam, that's not information that would have been shared with the Russians, uh, would it? I mean, that that is something that would have gone out. I actually out. think it would. It would be. I actually think it would. Okay. It would. And the U.S. government has provided intelligence to the Russian government in the past about um, terrorism-related matters. There's a certain duty to warn other governments when we have that kind of intelligence, when we have intelligence that there could be a loss of civilian life. So in my experience as a counterterrorism official, the U.S. government would share classified intelligence with the government of Russia about a potential imminent terrorist attack and terrorism-related plotting, while simultaneously warning the public to avoid certain venues to avoid a civilian loss of life. So despite mm. the incredibly tense and acrimonious relationship between the United States and Russia at this time, I do believe that there was intelligence sharing related to the advisory that the U.S. government put out two weeks ago about an imminent terrorist attack. And I would also assume, Elaine, that in the aftermath of this attack, as the U.S. government uh, gathers intelligence on the perpetrators and any other um, plots related to this one, it would share that with the Russians as well, as well as with partners. We may also see the U.S. government offer uh, recovery-related support, disaster-related support in the aftermath of this terrorist attack, like we've done in the past. Interesting, uh, because there has been uh, so much reporting on that acrimonious relationship uh, between the two countries. So to hear that uh, is, is really fascinating. And, and Sam, I wonder um, what the Russian public themselves may be told through official channels about this, because we know they have access to social media and other lines outside of sort of official government channels to get their information. What would you expect to hear sort of officially uh, from either Vladimir Putin himself or Russian officials about what took place? Unfortunately, I think we should expect Vladimir Putin to do what he does best, and that is just spew misinformation and disinformation about this terrorist attack. Putin has often campaigned and spoken publicly about how he is the only leader that can provide for Russia's security, and he's really used that as a pretense to engage in a lot of dictatorial steps, both internally and invading other countries. So regardless of who the actual perpetrator is of this attack, I would expect Vladimir Putin to try to point the finger at somebody that he perceives will serve his political interests. So whether that's claiming uh, inaccurately, perhaps that this was Ukrainian uh, individuals upset about the war in Ukraine, whether this was political opposition, he will make a claim uh, that the perpetrators were somebody that he perceives to be um, politically expedient to him, regardless of who the actual perpetrator was in this case. And that's really where the U.S. intelligence community, our intelligence partners, will likely have to focus on who actually did this, not only because the public deserves to know the truth, but again, understanding who did this, what the motivations were, are important so that we prevent it from happening again and keep civilians safe, whether it be in Russia or more broadly across the globe. All right, Sam Vinograd. Sam, thank you. Thank you. And we are following breaking news. Kate Middleton has revealed she has been diagnosed with cancer. The Princess of Wales made the announcement this afternoon. She says she is undergoing a course of preventative chemotherapy and that she is in the early stages of treatment. Princess Kate's last official public appearance was on Christmas Day of last year.